Hi, Kelly. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, Kelly Flint from Constant Contact. You are officially your title. I'm a senior regional development director uh, for Constant Contact. What is what is Constant Contact, and what does the senior regional development director director do? So Constant Contact, um, they're a company that helps small businesses, nonprofits, and associations with their email marketing and social media. It's a way for the little guys to look like the big guys. Mm -hmm. And so they make you look professional. They keep their products affordable. It's do-it-yourself, but with coaching. So we have people on the phones or in email or chat, or me locally, this is where I come into play, I get to share with small businesses live workshops and teach them how to do email marketing well or social media marketing, best practices and strategies and tips and trends, and it's so much fun. How, what's the most fun for you about this? The most work? fun is I get to work with the best people on the planet, meaning small business owners are living their passion. They're trying to make their dreams come true. And so every day I am inspired by the people that are in the audience. And same goes for nonprofits. They're trying to create change in our community. And so for me, it's an honor and a privilege to get to spend time with them on a daily basis. I am always inspired daily by their stories. Now my understanding is that you personally have been responsible for training more than 20,000 yeah. business owners and nonprofit representatives. Yeah, and that number is increasing day, almost daily. It's, it's amazing how many faces that I've met and hands that I've shook and classes that I've given. Um, it's just an honor and a privilege. So it's a really cool job, and I'm really lucky to have it. And I tell every audience I'm really lucky. I'm the luckiest person. I have the best job ever. I have the next best job. <laughs> I get a chance to meet wonderful people like you and bring your services and information to others around the world. Tell us specifically, give us some examples of your presentation and yeah. the information that you share that's valuable to business owners. So there's multiple presentations that I give and many people come to us to learn more about email marketing. Mm -hmm. And so we teach them the best practices in email marketing just to make sure that they look great. Um, a lot of email are, is in our inboxes. we kind of stuffed yeah, yeah. with emails. And so how do you stand out? How do you get in the inbox? How do you get open? How do and you not read? be spammed? <laughs> yeah, and your reputation is on the mm -hmm. line. So our classes are designed to educate, inform, and empower small business owners so they can do it the right way. So they can create and engage with their customers these amazing relationships so that they keep coming back and so that they're they become top of mind to their customers. And email marketing is just one component in that. There's also social media marketing. And our classes focus on helping them use these tools that are either low cost or no cost to engage and create these great relationships with their customers and prospects too. Give an example of how email marketing is used. I know that you have numerous testimonies of effective results that have gone straight to the bottom line when a business owner has, or a nonprofit um, has made an investment of time into these best practices that you've presented. Yeah, so um, when somebody's thinking about using email marketing, we say use an email marketing service. And the reason why is you're trying to reach a lot of people at once and you don't want to use a one-to-one -one email system, an email client like Outlook or AOL or Yahoo or Gmail. Those are great when you're just having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. But there's times when you want to reach everyone, everyone, all your customers, your friends and family, all at one time. And that's really bulk email. So when businesses are thinking about doing email marketing, they want to start there with a the service. And then from there, they want to share what they know. And I always tell my classes, you want to show them you care by what you share. And the people sitting in these classrooms are subject experts. And many times they don't even realize how much knowledge they have and the power of that, of just sharing what they know and giving advice and tips and using email marketing or social media as the vehicle to share those, the knowledge that they know and their subject expertise. 
Um, it's often I meet people and they say, I just don't know what to share. I don't know what my audience wants to hear. And I always tell them, boy, you know, what you know to me is like a master's degree. And for you telling it to me, it may just be a 101 of, of what you know, but that's where you start. Just keep it simple and you've got to have fun. And I was telling my class yesterday and they all laughed when I said, you've got to have fun because this is social media and email marketing is part of social media and that comes through in your voice when you're doing these and if you're not having fun I want you to fake it until you make it yeah. and pretend like you're having fun because you will eventually we don't want you to take it too serious but it, it doesn't have to be a lot of information it can just be pieces along the way. One of the examples that you gave when I heard you at a presentation was the swinery. Yeah. <laughs> and an, a, biz, a small business in Oregon, I believe, yep. Portland area. Excuse me, and they were having an event where they were with bacon yes. and created advertising and promoted this event using social media and email marketing yep. around that event. Can you share some of the that information yeah with it's the an amazing it's story yeah so the swinery decided they wanted to have an event and they wanted to get the news out using an email that they sent an email invitation but what they did that was super smart was they made that email they gave it the ability to go social they turned something on at the top of the email which is a social share bar mm -hmm. and what that allows the recipient to do, the person receiving the email, is to then share it on the swinery's behalf. So for example, if I receive their email, and I live here in Long Beach, California, and the swinery's in Portland, Oregon, and if I had received that email, I would have been so excited to share it with my friends and family and colleagues, because what they did so well was they created an event, an email, that inspired people to want to share because what the event was all about was a international bacon day party. Something fun. <laughs> it was. And they were giving away free bacon chocolate chip cookies and they had bacon hot dogs and bacon hamburgers and bacon everything. And you know, not everybody likes bacon, right, right. but do you know somebody? <laughs> yeah, These so. people are like passionate yeah. about bacon, right? So they created a great event and when they turned on that social share bar, they sent out the email first and they had a great open rate, about 800 people opened the email. By the way, the average open rate for email marketing is about 20 to 22%. percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but because they turned on that social share bar at the top of the email, that email was viewed and viewed and they got a 60% increase of reach just by 60%? Yeah. It's incredible. There was another example that you shared of a, a salon. Yeah. And just some fun tips that you can pass along to viewers today from that salon's experience based on information that you brought to them. Yeah, so Dom owns a salon, and not only does he own this small business, but he also does the nails there too. And he's a busy guy. And he was looking for a way that he could just have a magic bullet. How could he reach everybody with just one vehicle? And so in order to determine which tool to use, he kind of had to test. So he's really smart. He put together a promotion, and the promotion was you get 20% off your next manicure. But the way he set it up was he put a different code on Facebook and Twitter and in his email. And the different codes were like, on Twitter it was, I love Dom, come in and say I love Dom, right. and you get 20% off. And on Facebook it was, I love getting my nails done. And on his email it was, I love Glamour Nails and Spa, because that's the name of his salon. And what he did was, as people were coming in and saying, I love Dom, he would check it off on the list, I love getting my nails done, I love Glamour Nails and Spa. And then he was able to go back and he measure. Track yeah. and, and measure. And Simply on a piece results. of paper. Mm -hmm. And so he was putting the information out there in different places and able to track where it was coming from. And what he found out in the end was a lot of people were coming through his email marketing, but that's just not enough. Half the people came through email, but the other half were coming through Facebook and Twitter. So now he continues to use all three. How about generationally? Where's the biggest gap? and how do we close it? Earlier you made a comment about all of us have the same learning curve when new information 
is so presented true. to us. Can you speak to that? Because I want to make sure that um, viewers and listeners understand that this is something that's doable regardless of where you are and in terms of technological skill and also physically. You know, you don't want technology get to get in the way of all this. Your right. business, you've got to get it out there. And engagement marketing is so amazing and you can use social media to engage. It's really about having a one-on-one -on -one relationship and social media helps you do that. So I hear oftentimes, you know, maybe different generations aren't up to speed because they weren't born with a laptop in their hands like the newer generations, mm -hmm. right? But it is true, we're all on the same playing field and here's why. It's almost daily that a new tool pops up in the industry that everybody should use. Like, for example, Pinterest is a new one that's just popped up and it's very popular. 80% of females are using it. What is Pinterest? Pinterest is, you know how you can create a vision board? Yes. And you rip out magazine mm -hmm. photos and maybe it's a vacation that you dream of taking or you want to redo a room in your house, a yes. makeover. This allows you to create vision boards electronically in a website and it becomes your own website so that you can have different vision boards and you can share them with other people. But the reason why this is valuable to businesses is because you can actually sell things on Pinterest. So let's say you're an interior designer and you have a line of pillows and sheets and blankets that you, sh you sell. People might be pinning those into their vision board and that might be something that they want and then you have the ability to click I on that I see it and click on it and say, I offer this. Oh my God. Right. So that's just one new tool that just came out. When that tool came out, the playing field was level. Nobody knew how to use that tool. We all had to kind of pick it up and try it out and play with it. And I don't want people to let technology get in their way because I'll tell you this, we're all walking around with a smartphone, you know? Yeah. And those are more complicated than it is to even use Twitter or Facebook or create an email. So I think it's just the mindset. You've got to go in and not be afraid to push all the buttons because I guarantee you, you won't break Facebook. There's no <laughs> way you can. So push on all the buttons and try things. How do uh, review and rating sites work, Kelly? So reviews and rating sites, really now with this digital age, it's the word of mouth is social. You know, mm -hmm. Social media has made the word of mouth just go digitally. And reviews and rating sites allow people to say what it's like to work with you or to visit your business or to have your service. And there's lots of them out there like Yelp, Open Table for restaurants, TripAdvisor. And people go and talk about their own experiences. You know, 78% of people uh, do not trust ads. You know, they, they trust com consumer recommendations. People that are trusting ads and advertisement, that's, that's like 14%. So what that means is word of mouth is very valuable. It holds a lot of weight, and that's where people want to get the information before making a purchase. We carry more power than we realize then. Yes, through our voice. Through our voice. And talking about our experiences. Yeah. And so for a business, what that means is you want the ability to have people review what it's like to work with you. But you know, first and foremost, with all the social media, you've got to provide an excellent customer experience. There's no getting around it anymore. It's like one of the fundamental principles. And frankly, I'll tell you why, because there's no marketing cure for sucking. Yeah. You <laughs> well, you also gave an example at an art gallery oh, and yeah. being able in the instant you know, to, to tweet that I'm at this art opening or this reception and it's lovely and people can hear that good news and then the flip side of it uh, could be a negative but turned into something good if the owner is paying attention and is engaged and that is, oh, they ran out of wine. I guess I'll go home. And then if someone is monitoring it and says, oh, we ran out of wine, oh, never mind, they fixed it and it's all. So we have this incredible power and resource within our social networks to influence, to be influencers. Influencers and also receive information yeah. and feedback. And it's not just a one-sided conversation. 
it is a conversation, mm -hmm. so it's two people talking. And in that case, it, that art gallery, before they had the event, they sent everybody an email and said, if you come to this event, we want you to use Twitter. And when you use Twitter, we want you to include a hashtag in your tweet. And you've seen those hashtags. It's just a pound sign with some words after it. And you can create one, they're free. And so they said, anytime you're using a tweet, include this. And then what happens is that hashtag acts as an aggregator or a filter. So if you just search by the hashtag, you can see every instance that somebody talked about that specific event. And that's what the story you told. So the people that were running in the event could be watching Twitter and see, oh, we've run out of red wine. Quick, get some more from the back before people leave. You know, Does they this get that give feedback. them access also to grow their own networks and subscriber base? Absolutely. By using this. And that's one of the best Which is practice. their clientele, potential clientele right there. Absolutely, because your best source for new customers are existing customers. And when you use a social media tool, you want to be sure you're cross-promoting the other tools that you're using. So when you're on Twitter, talk about what you're doing on Facebook. And when you're on Twitter, talk about your email marketing and ask people to join. So that way you're talking about all your tools and you're, because I might only know that you're using Twitter and I might be connected to you through that means of communication, but maybe I spend more time on Facebook and I prefer to connect and engage with you there. And I might find out about it through your tweet. And so it's a good idea to always be talking about what you're doing on other social media sites through all your channels. Safe Passage, um, they're a domestic violence transition organization. And they're doing some amazing work in downtown Los Angeles. Trish Steele is part of that organization. She's the founder. And what she's focusing on is not only just helping the families, the victims of domestic violence, get back on their feet, change their self-confidence on the inside, also on the outside, but also educating. So she's going into the prisons and jails and getting in front of the abusers and educating them and teaching them. And she said she went there recently and spoke to them, and she felt so much love in the room. And she didn't expect to feel mm -hmm. love in the room in the walls of a prison. Mm -hmm. But there is hope for change. And that's what they're all about. They're about breaking the cycle. That's what it comes down to. So it's an amazing set of people that she's brought to the table, the sheriff's department, the mayor's office, Ritz Carlton, LA Live is part of it, several doctors, plastic surgeons, dentists, and even lawyers. A truly holistic approach to solving a problem beyond just the individual, but really putting in place, breaking the cycle generationally. Yeah. This is powerful. How is social media able to be supportive and effective in an area such as, you know, a program such as this one? Yeah, so social media is key in terms of communication. It's one place that people spend a lot of time. They share their experience, they find information, they connect with people. And because it's a powerful tool, it's a tool that can help create social change. And one tool that I suggest every nonprofit be using, Twitter, Facebook, get themselves out there so that people can hear their messaging. And it's a great place to ask for help or ask for people to join, whether it's donations, volunteerism, or looking for those key people, those influencers, who can help take them to the next level. Does Constant Contact provide a system for contributions to be made, or can you speak to that for contributions to be made through the technology, texting, um, a, a, t a contribution to this program, if that were the decision. Is that a, something that, a service that you also are able to address? So um, the donations can be taken through any type of email or any online registration. So those are just two tools that Constant Contact offers, our email marketing and online event registration. And in that process, anywhere you can have a donate button. And that donation button can be linked right to the system the nonprofit is using to collect funds, or they can link it to a PayPal account or a Google checkout or something like that. So the, all of those mechanisms, and even through social media, all it takes is a link, a hyperlink to a web address 
where they you, you can take those donations. So they should ask for them. Not not every post should just right. be you know, donate, give us money, give us money. Yeah, right. But it, you should do it. You've got to do it. You've got to ask, and you've got to ask for what you need. Kelly, can you talk to us about the power of social media in um, expanding a message in across the world and how quickly it can be done around a cause? Yeah, so I think a lot of nonprofits and causes don't take the fact that social media can extend their reach. Um, and you're, you're not only reaching the people that you're connected to, but you're reaching the people that they're connected to. So it amplifies your reach, maybe 40 to 130 times. The way that you can be successful at that is just to tell your story. And all nonprofits ha or causes have a passion for what they're doing. It's just getting that story out there, getting it into the hands of the public, and keep telling your story. The stories are the most amazing connection tool that we have, the storytelling. And it's the best way for a nonprofit to explain what they do and where they want to go and what they want to happen. And there's all kinds of success stories out there in terms of nonprofits that have used Twitter or social media or YouTube and put their story out there. And when you do that, you're allowing it to be shared. There's no set specific um, formula that says if you do this, then this will happen, but why not try? So what I would suggest is put it out there, give it into the hands of the people that care about what you're doing, and look for influencers within your own network and get them closer to you so they can also share that message. Once it gets out there, it can be swooped up by the rest of our country and even the rest of the world pretty rapidly. Because the one thing about social media is it connects all of us through the miles. We don't have to be sitting face to face. We can be connected from different sides of the planet. So just make yourself, put yourself out there, put your nonprofit out there in your story and your message. Sure. Information overload, competition, just constant information coming at you. How does an organization, business or nonprofit, distinguish themselves within the herd, you know, of all of this information that's being placed out, you know, before viewers and listeners in this realm of social media. Yeah, and you know, people sometimes... I How run do you not get lost in the pack, you know? Right, right. And I think there's too much focus from some small businesses and nonprofits that they have too much competition. And at the end of the day, there's plenty of room for everyone because we're all connected to different people and we're all different, we're all unique. Mm -hmm. So what we need to bring to the table is what makes my business different from other people who do this exact same thing. There is always one thing that you do that they don't or they can't. And so it's opportunity. And one thing that you can do is watch your competition. See what they do well, see what you can do better. And you don't focus on them you're going to focus on the people that love what you do. So it's your current customers, your raving fans, your volunteers, your donors, and you're gonna strengthen that relationship and you're gonna delight them and you're gonna give them advice and you're gonna tell them how to make their life better or easier or the change that you wanna create. And if that is your focus, you will grow. It's all about having that focus on how you can better connect with them and they'll help you do the growing because you know what they're gonna do? They're going to tell their people about you, their friends and family and coworkers, because we surround ourselves with like-minded individuals. Right. And that's all you got to do. It just starts with one. Every email address, every Twitter handle, every Facebook follower is a piece of gold for you. It's a connection. It's somebody who stood up for you and said they like what you do, and that's why they're following you, or that's why they like you on Facebook, or that's why they've opted into your email address. So treat each one of those as an actual person, and you never know who you they're going to bring. Know. We are sitting here in Long Beach at the SBDC. Can you speak to how you are affiliated with SBDC and the wonderful work that is done here? Yes, it's an amazing organization for small businesses called the Small Business Development Center, and there's locations all over the country. 
And we're lucky right now to be sitting in the lead center. This is like the mothership for all of the um, chapters that they have across Los Angeles. And the Small Business Development Center offers free one-on-one -on -one counseling for business owners. No cost. They are funded by the SBA, the Small Business Administration, our government. And the people that work here have passion for small business. They've either, either owned their own small business or they have an MBA. They know small business. They speak that language. They offer low cost or free workshops as well. And you can talk to a counselor about anything. It might be about HR or taking your business overseas, or maybe you need access to capital. Maybe you need some funding. They are here for you and they can help you get that loan application together for your business. They can help you with your business plan. They can help you take your business to the next level. So please use them as an amazing resource and most people, when they think of small business, think of mom and pop startup. Uh, to have people involved at an office like this who have ran small businesses and also have MBAs, it sounds like there's a gap in between that they also are qualified to help support and address. Is that accurate? Or is it primarily for startups? No, it's for uh, any cycle of life. In fact, I challenge every business owner who's been in business for years to come to the SBDC and have them evaluate your business because I guarantee you they will take you to the next level. They're for every type of small business, no matter just starting or having been in business in a while. And in fact, through the SBDC, there's another program through Goldman Sachs yes. called 10,000 Small Businesses. And it's almost like a free MBA program uh, for your own business. And it's for small businesses. They're, the qualifications, you have to have been in business a few years. You have to have generated so much money and have so many employees. So this is for established businesses. But they train you to take your business to the next level. So I just can't say enough about what an amazing resource the SBDC is for small businesses, and it's no cost. The information for SBDC and Safe Haven for Constant Contact, Kelly Flint, will be on the sylviaglobal.com website and available for viewers and listeners to follow up. Thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, I appreciate thank you. it. I hope you'll come back. We have lots to. to talk about. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.